Hello everyone, my name is Marex and today we are meeting again here in Woodmiser, Europe and Co. And today we are going to be talking about Woodmiser bandsaw blades and how to extend your blade life. Before we jump into it, I would like to tell you a bit more about today's presentation. Um, maybe tell you a bit more about we have, what we have been doing in the past, uh, what are our future plans. So this is a live stream, which is a series of live streams that we have been doing for the past year. And um, this year, the previous two live streams you can find out on our YouTube channel, where we have been talking a bit more about Woodmiser tooth setters for blades and Woodmiser sharpeners. And this is like an organic continuation of those two live streams. Uh, about bandsaw blades. Today we are going to be talking about the blades, how to sharpen them, how to extend the blade life. And uh, before we go uh, further into this, I would like to um, invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our future live streams and you can view our previous live streams as well. Uh, apart from that, we are also publishing other video content on our YouTube channel. Mainly, um, we do our customer stories, product news, and other company news, um, helpful how-tos, and things like that. So, if you like that kind of content, I urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would prefer other ways of communication, I would suggest that you jump on one of your local Woodmiser websites. We do have a local Woodmiser website for Europe, uh, for all European countries, for the US, Africa, Asia, Australia. There you can subscribe to our newsletters. And uh, similarly to the YouTube channel, we would be able to send out to you some product news, customer stories, how-tos, and other interesting stuff as well. Um, let's get right into our presentation and um, I will be talking a bit more about our production here in Kowo and um, specifically about the blades production and I invite you to stay for, uh, for that. And I'll see you in just about a 30 seconds short intro. Welcome back, and uh, as I said earlier, I would like to start uh, perhaps telling you a bit more about the production facilities here in Poland and how we are working um, to be able to produce all the uh, sawmilling machines and uh, wood processing machines uh, together with blades. Um, so in short, uh, here this production plan in Kowa, Poland has been active for over 30 years already and um, this level of experience allows us to be able to produce efficiently uh, bandsaw blades together with other machinery. Uh, for our bandsaw blades we use only um, high quality European steel uh, which um, goes through a rigorous quality control uh, before the blade is produced. Uh, besides blades, in our manufacturing facility we also produce here uh, Woodmiser sawmills, uh, professional and industrial sawmills. We also produce here smart lock processing lines, so it's um, industrial equipment. Um, some other machines that um, are in line here produced are, of course, resaws, edgers, our woodworking machines that include table saws, mm, slab flattener, um, mm, also we produce planers, thicknessers, uh, molders, four-sided planer molders, and other machines. And of course, I can't forget about uh, the blades and blades maintenance equipment. That would be blade tooth setters and sharpeners. If you would like to know more about our uh, products, I suggest that you watch 
um, our previous live streams where we have been talking about new products uh, last year that we introduced to the Woodmiser product range. And if you would like to know more about blade maintenance equipment, you can find our live streams on tooth setters and sharpeners here on the channel as well. Um, I would like to um, maybe tell you a bit more about the blade production uh, process here in Poland. So whenever we get uh, steel uh, that we source here in Europe, whenever it gets delivered to the factory here in Woodmiser, it goes through a quality control. What that means? That means that we take all steel and we make sure that it fits our um, like uh, uh, quality levels. We have an internal lab. We are checking uh, literally under mi microscope every uh, coil of steel that we get to make sure that it fits our standards. Um, after that, we process the steel here in the factory. So uh, whenever you get blades from Woodmiser, all blades are sharpened and set and um, all our blades come ready to work. Um, so um, a big part of the blade manufacturing here in Poland, of course, like I said before, it's sharpening, uh, setting and also welding. We do have specialized machines for all of those tasks and um, we always make sure that whenever a customer receives blades that they are top quality. Uh, this is possible uh, because we have introduced um, ways to control the quality of our blades not only here in factory but also outside the factory. And I would like to perhaps show you a bit uh, closer the packaging of our blades. Um, and I would like to tell you a bit more how we control the, qu the, the quality of blades whenever they leave our factory. So we are going to start to move uh, further to the packaging units right here. We have pre prepared some, um, some packages for you that I would like to show. So uh, this is a whole palette of Woodmiser blades and um, our blades are always delivered only in original packaging. So here um, we do have three kinds of boxes. So small flat boxes, larger ones, and the square boxes here. So for different kinds of lengths of blades, we use different kinds of packaging. Meaning that if blades are shorter, for instance, um, 401 centimeters, then we are able to pack them 15 blades in a package like this. And the package like this contains, of course, a label. It is a very important part of quality control. Um, this label features, you know, the blade type. So this, for instance, is a double hard blade. Um, it shows that it's width, uh, the tooth spacing, um, the thickness of the blade, the blade profile, length, and how many, pack, how many um, blades are in the package. Also, uh, the, probably one of the most important things for the quality control is, of course, the coil ID. Using this coil ID number, we will be able to tell you um, the operator name who has been welding uh, these blades, you know, um, where the steel came from. Um, we would be able to pull out those pictures from the microscope to check um, in what condition we got the steel. So using this technology, we have been able to consistently grow the quality of our blades. And similarly to information that is available here in the box is also shown on our blades. So I would like to show you a few samples of our blades just so that you can see how we can control that uh, as well. Here on the stand you can see there are different kinds of uh, the blade profiles and there are two different blade profiles here. So one is a specialty blade vortex uh, blade here and another is the blade type silver tip. We're going to be using silver tip blade just to show you an example of how we are marking our blades. So all Woodmiser blades are engraved uh, with a Woodmiser logo on them and we use a laser to engrave that. So you'd be able to see a Woodmiser logo, the blade type, in this case, this is silver tip blade. And uh, just a bit further, you would be able to read the uh, specifications of the blade. So here we can see that this is a 35 
times 107 blade, meaning that this is a 35 uh, width blade and 1.07 um, blade thickness. A bit further here, you can see 10-30, that's the tooth profile, and here is the coil ID number. The same coil ID number should be on the blade and in the box as well. Using this uh, quality control method, we can assure our customers that we can deliver the highest quality blades, uh, particularly to any part of the world from here, from Poland, as well as from our other manufacturing facilities. Um, so, uh, and I think I just want to mention one last thing about boxes before we move forward, is um, an important part of delivering blades to a customer. And whenever you receive boxes with blades, make sure you don't throw them out, but keep them just in case if you want to send them to resharpening and setting later on. They are hard enough to withstand transportation to the customer and back from the customer as well. Um, we have prepared a, uh, like a, a video about our production here in Poland, and I would love you to see it. Um, we will be able uh, to show you right now the whole process of quality control, our main engineers, and uh, show off our manufacturing facility that we are very proud of. So I invite you for this uh, around the six minute video to see how the blade production looks like here in Woodmiser headquarters in Europe, Koło Poland. Woodmiser Benso blades can be found in sawmills in over 100 countries worldwide. They work in different climate zones and environments, cutting every kind of wood, from hard tropical African logs to soft coniferous European timber. Woodmiser is a world-leading brand in the market of wood processing machinery. In Europe, we've been active for more than 30 years, and the name of our company is synonymous with premium quality band sawmills. In the heart of every such machine there's a blade, doing an amazing job of converting logs into valuable building material. Woodmizer blades are manufactured under supervision of experienced and qualified workmen, using top quality European steel and utilizing the best machine tools available today. Our offer includes blades in over 100 configurations, based on different profiles, tool settings and steel grades. Thanks to those various characteristics, we are sure that customers get the product edges they need. Woodmizer blades must pass all strict quality checks at every production stage before they are shipped to our customers. We do all this just here, in Woodmizer's factory in Poland, in the very heart of Europe. The whole manufacturing process is controlled by a computerized system and an internal laboratory. We prepare a sample from each steel coil to check the hardness, width, 
thickness, side and cross curvature, microscopic structure of steel, and reject from the production those coils that failed the control tests. Now the coils are sent to the press punching of teeth. In this process, we use high efficiency, specialized machines. Only the coils with the correct tooth spacing and gullet depth get the ID card and are free to move to the next stage of production. In the induction hardening process, every tooth of the blade is heated up and then quickly cooled down in order to make the teeth harder. As a result, the blade is more resistant to abrasion and it can cut with high precision for longer time. Laser marking on each blade helps to identify the raw material used for production, date of production and the worker responsible for quality checks. Now the blade coils and lines designed for the process of sharpening, setting, rolling and blade length cutting. Each line operator cuts out more than 10 samples during production of one coil. To check the amount of material removed during sharpening, the proper hook and clearance angles, the correct tooth setting and the correct side curvature of the tape. The blades are now sent to stations for welding. The machines utilized for these operations are highly specialized and not many manufacturers of bandsaw blades use them in their processes. With the expertise knowledge and this specialized able to produce strong and reliable welds. It's exactly this sensitive point on the blade which makes wood blades well distinguished from other competitors' products. At the last stage of production, every blade is checked on a bent tester to measure if its weld is strong enough. The blades which have successfully passed all strict quality tests qualify to ship to the customer. We put them into branded boxes with the Woodmiser logo and label them with full product information. Blade type, width and length of blade, type of blade material, profile ID number, date of production and QR code. Providing this information with every box of blade helps us to find out when the could check its quality and which steel coil was used to make it. Remember, only the original Woodmeister blade can guarantee high quality of cutting and extended lifetime at a very affordable price. If you value professional and safe work, choose the original blade from Woodmeister. Welcome back everyone and I hope that you liked the video that we had prepared for you and you were able to see the quality control, the journey of steel from the producer to us and then to the end customer. I'm very happy that you're joining back to us and as our next part of presentation I would like to talk about the structure of the blades, the specifics um, and I'll also let you know how to find further information about that. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard right here and going to be uh, explaining you a bit more in details. So right now in front of you, you should be able to see a um, basic blade specifications. This is how a blade is built, a bandsaw blade. I'm going to start uh, maybe reading from the beginning. So um, A here stands for tooth spacing and Woodmiser produces different blades based on their tooth spacing. So we would be able to produce blades starting with tooth spacing from one half of an inch to one and a quarter inch 
but the most expensive, sorry, most popular blades in Europe are with two spacing, seven eighths of an inch. You should be able to uh, think of um, tooth spacing in a way that uh, the wider the cut you are doing on your sawmill, the larger tooth spacing there, you sh there should be. The next thing here on the blade I would like to talk about is the blade gullet. And a gullet, it's, um, it's a place that is use, uh, used to transport the sawdust that is being produced by the uh, blade teeth cutting inside the wood. So uh, with this, this is the place where the uh, sawdust accumulates and then shoots out. And the gullet and its shape and the tooth height usually depends on the hook and, um, and the back angle of the teeth. We'll be speaking about that in just a moment. The next thing here is the tooth height, but like I said, uh, it really depends on the, on the hook and the hook and the back angle. Um, and here are the angles that I was talking about. So here, this is the, uh, the hook angle, and here is the back angle of the teeth. Those two um, depend on your feed speed and the hardness of wood meaning that um, we produce different kinds of blades based on different types of angles, profiles, and you should be able to choose the one that fits your production and your material the most. The next thing here on my chart is F, that's blade width, and blade width uh, comes very close with the blade thickness, and those to should be uh, chosen depending on your sawmill and power options, meaning that um, the thicker blade and a wider blade should be used on more powerful sawmills with a more powerful motors or engines. And the last thing that I would like to talk with you about is the, the tooth setting. Right here on the picture you can see that the tooth is set either to one side and, and then to the other side. And the tooth setting is determined by the wood hardness that uh, you are cutting. And you have to remember that the softer the wood, uh, the wider the tooth should be set. And if you would like to know more about wood miser blades and how they are, uh, how they are set and um, how to read them, I do suggest that you go to our websites and search for the Blades ebook. And this is a special ebook that we have prepared for our customers so that they would be able to learn more about the production of wood, maintenance, and prolonging the life of a blade. I suggest that if you are located here in Europe, that you go to woodmiser.eu and search for the um, the ebook there. Um, right now, I would like to maybe uh, talk with you a bit uh, more about the blade types and how to choose a blade type with Woodmiser. We do have different kinds of, of um, blade materials that we are using, and um, I'm going to show you the most popular ones right now and talk with you in just a nutshell. Uh, what are the main differences about those? So um, right now you should be able to see in front of you different kinds of blades and we are going to be uh, talking about uh, the material that those blades are built of. So right here let's say we have got a bimetal blade which means that uh, this blade is made of two different kinds of steel. Um, it's a high alloy uh, steel for the blade body and the blade tooth are made out of more harder uh, harder steel and these are Woodmiser specialty blades. We produce bimetal blades in two different configurations. You have a standard and hard blades. Those uh, differ with the shape of the gullet and uh, we suggest to uh, this blade type to our customers that are cutting exotic and extremely hard woods. The next on the list is the Max Flex blade. This blade is also made out of a high alloy steel and um, we have chosen this steel to make sure that we would be able to provide, as the name suggests, maximum 
uh, flex life. It's a premium quality blade and we suggest this to be used by our customers that are cutting premium quality woods. So the more expensive the wood, the more expensive the blade. The next one on my list is the most popular blade type here in Europe is Woodmiser Double Hard Blade. It's this one right here. Uh, the sample in front of you is the double hard uh, blade with a blade profile 432. And um, this is another quite popular uh, blade profile here in Europe. We use uh, for these blades also high alloy steel and um, those blades are very good for cutting European wood. So we suggest our customers using this type of blade if they are cutting different kinds of uh, wood species, for instance, hard and soft. But depending on what you are cutting, we would be able to uh, prefer, prepare blades for you in different kinds of configurations. So if you are cutting predominantly hardwood, make sure you mention that on the phone when you're speaking to one of our representatives and they will be able to suggest the best blade type and profile and tooth setting for you. I've got two more blades left that I would like to talk with you about and right now I'd like to show you perhaps the uh, silver tip blade. The silver tip blade is one of our more inexpensive blades and this is made out of carbon steel and is designed as a general purpose milling blade for primary and secondary breakdown. So um, here in Europe, there are, uh, let's say, pallet producers that are really liking this blade. Um, it's very economical and you can always resharpen those blades too. And the last blade on my list is one of our last additions uh, to Woodmiser blade lineup is StartCut. StartCut is the cheapest uh, blade that we are offering and this is also made out of spring carbon steel and um, also widely preferred by our pallet manufacturers here in uh, Europe. I would like to maybe come back here to the top of my list and show you uh, another specialty blade. This is Woodmiser Vortex blade and um, it is quite special because this one is made in a way that um, it reduces the um, uh, amount of waste that is left on the board. So for instance, if you are cutting some specialty woods and you want to make sure that whenever you cut um, your slabs that you want that the surface is clean after the cut. This is the blade that we are uh, suggesting. And there are some different species of wood in the world that actually are being cut very well by these blades. And if you would like to know more about the blade types that I've just spoken about, all information also is available in the ebook. So if you're looking for that one, just go to woodmiser.eu and search for the ebook right there. I believe if you go to um, the top of the menu and you uh, search for information about about our blog and there in how to's you should be able to find more information about that. Um, so uh, I would like to continue talking a bit more about choosing the right blade for your sawmill and how to do that. Uh, Perfect. In a perfect world, I would suggest that you would just call one of our representatives and speak to them. But um, you have to keep in mind that you can't just choose a blade, um, whichever you want. You have to make sure that it actually fits your sawmill. And one of the um, main ways how to choose the blade for your sawmill, the thickness and width, is considering your sawmill type. So for instance, if you've got LT15, you should go for more narrow blade because that'd be easier for the sawmill and because the blade guide rollers are uh, more narrow on that sawmill. And if you are cutting wood with LT70 or even perhaps WB2000, our uh, larger industrial sawmill, then those rollers would be much, much uh, wider and you would be able to use a wider saw there. Of course, another big thing to keep in mind when choosing a blade is the wood species that you are predominantly cutting. So if you are cutting perhaps exotic wood like Maranti or importing wood from Asia or Africa here to Europe or to US, you should be um, 
trying to use perhaps our bimetal blades. Uh, and if you are cutting some local wood species, for instance, uh, pine, then um, you could be uh, well off cutting that with double hard blades. Uh, however, I would like to irritate that depending on your geographical location and you know the um, perhaps the, the even the time of the year when you are cutting, if that's a hot summer or a cold winter, that would also make a big difference in choosing the blade and you have to make sure that you mention that to our representatives on the phone as well. There are ways how you can um, prevent premature blade breakage and how to extend blade life and I would like to go through the maybe just a few sawmill settings that you should keep in mind when cutting that should prolong your blade life. The first thing that I would like to mention is choosing a sawmill with a debarker. So if you are processing large amounts of wood, we suggest our customers to get a debarker. Debarker is a option for our bigger sawmills. You uh, would be able to get a debarker, for instance, on an LT40 sawmill. And it's a device that cuts into the bark of the log that you are cutting and removes the most abrasive part. Because when the wood grows, perhaps somewhere near the road or somewhere uh, even in a field, um, it um, has a tendency to keep a lot of abrasive materials in the bark. So sometimes our customers can find a lot of sand or even small rocks in the bark and the barker does exa exactly what, it, what the name says. It cuts a like a piece of the bark so that uh, when your blade comes into the log it doesn't meet so much abrasive materials. Um, big thing is also making sure that uh, you've got your um, drive belts uh, tensioned properly. So a drive belt is something that takes um, you know the power from your motor and brings it towards the blade. So whenever you're um, changing uh, drive belt, make sure that you're checking the uh, drive belt tension from time to time because new fresh belts, they do have a tendency to extend in the first, uh, first uh, few days of using them. Perhaps the next big thing also uh, with belts is the um, blade wheel belts. Uh, we produce sawmills with and without uh, blade wheel belts, but the sawmills that do have blade wheel belts, uh, you should make sure that you always inspect the, you know, the condition of your uh, blade wheel belt. And the blade wheel belt on a Woodmizer sawmills is used to make sure that the blade that you are using on your sawmill doesn't meet the steel of the blade wheel and sometimes they wear off. So you have to make sure that you inspect uh, their state and also check uh, if there is any debris, pitch buildup, or maybe some dust under the belt. And if on one side of the belt there will be, uh, you know, uh, some debris or some pitch, then uh, when the blade wheel will be rotating, it might be producing some vibration and you don't want any additional vibration on your sawmill. Sawmill actually is a very precise instrument and has to be maintained very well to produce a perfect cut every time. Um, uh, another big thing that I want to mention is blade tension. So in a sawmill, a bandsaw is placed on two blade wheels and it's being extended and as well as uh, blade wheel belts and anything else with the time steel can extend a little bit you know when it gets a bit hotter so you have to make sure that you uh, double check the blade tension during the time of cutting the blade not just at the beginning of the shift but every time when you're changing the blade and perhaps if you can every time when you're changing the log on your sawmill you can read the tension uh, on your sawmill head and depending on the sawmill you're using you know 
there are different kinds of configurations, but it is very easy to maintain it. And maintaining right blade tension will increase the blade life. Next big thing that I want to talk about is your uh, feed rate. You know, when you're cutting the wood, you should be able to feed the sawmill head as quickly as possible to maintain a straight cut. This way you will definitely prolong the, uh, the life of the blade because um, when you're using slower feed rates, those actually uh, can cause premature breaking. So you should be able to feed your sawmill as quickly as possible to get the most out of your blade. I believe the most overlooked by some operators is the, uh, is, you know, is the blade fatigue. Every blade that you use on your sawmill should be changed um, in around one and a half, two hours. Meaning that whenever you start a shift, you should have a few blades lined up so that you can change those during your shift. And when you start cutting, make sure that you use at least four to six blades for every shift, meaning that you change the blade every two hours. Changing the blade every two hours will allow the blade to um, maintain its body condition well, prevent premature breakage, prevent the breakage on a wheel, on a weld. And this is a very, very good uh, work ethics um, example that we are asking our customers to maintain in their sawmills um, as much as they can. If you would like to know more tips on how to prolong your blade life, I urge you to download our blades ebook from our websites. And I have been heavily promoting it during this video, but I really know what a great value that book is. In that book, we'll tell you about choosing the blade, the difference uh, in different blade types, how to prolong your blade life, how to sharpen, how to maintain your blades. And we would also tell you more about the uh, resharp. A resharp also is a great way uh, to get the most out of your blades because a, uh, a resharp, we call that a service, when you uh, take your blade, put it back into the box and send it to one of the authorized blade sharpening. Meaning that whenever you cut um, wood with your blade, it might get dull. It's not, uh, perhaps it will not get dull from just two hours of sewing, but whenever it gets dull, you should coil it back, put it in a box and send it to a resharp center. There, our specialists will inspect the blade, make sure that it's in good condition, clean it, um, set the teeth and sharpen your blades. This way, your blades uh, get, you know, uh, back into their original condition because Woodmiser sells the same sharpening and tooth setting equipment to other customers. We offer the tooth setting and sharpening almost in every country in Europe and you should be able to call your local representative and ask them for contact information for a local resharp center. Resharpened blades will cut as good as new blades. Um, another maybe um, interesting thing that people are always asking are, uh, is uh, how many times a blade can be resharpened. Depending on the wood you are cutting and depending on your sawmill and uh, perhaps most importantly, depending on your operator, you should be able to uh, resharp your blades five to ten times. And as a reminder, if you have got any urgent questions right now during this live stream, you can ask them right now in the chats or in the comments on Facebook and on YouTube, and I'll answer them right away uh, during our Q&A session after this presentation. Uh, I would like to talk a bit more about um, resharping the blades. I'm just going to take a bimetal 1030 profile blade right here to demonstrate you a few things. So uh, the first thing is that Woodmiser uses um, CBN wheels to sharpen blades. A CBN wheel has a special abrasive surface 
that allows for many, many blades to be sharpened with one wheel. And an interesting part of uh, like a sharpened sharpening wheel, CBN sharpening wheel, is that it comes in the right profile. You don't have to profile or change the uh, wheel shape to get a perfect uh, sharpening. It already comes like this out of the box. And this wheel should perfectly fit a 1030, um, 1030 blade profile and it actually sharpens uh, every blade very, very well. Like I said, we are using the same equipment to produce the blades here in the factory. So you would be able to uh, buy from us CBN wheels for different kinds of sharpeners. These wheels come in two different sizes, in five or eight inches. Right here next to the wheel is a um, uh, jug of oil here and this is the European uh, mineral oil that we are using for our sharpeners and this uh, oil has a meets standard of ACP1 uh, it means that it is less toxic than any other blade type and we suggest using this for our sharpeners a blade in our sharpeners is um, is being uh, is being used to lubricate the actual CBN wheel to make sure that it always stays clean, to get it um, uh, uh, cooler as well. And the blade like this, whenever it get, gets into the air, is not as toxic and is not bad. Is not as bad for your uh, sharpening equipment operators. Um, so blade. Uh, blade sharpening oil, this mineral oil, you are able to order online as well in our Woodmiser European e-store at woodmiser.eu. Um, I think that uh, a logical end to your blade life is when, whenever it's time for it to let go. Uh, when a blade life finishes, make sure that you recycle those blades, send them to scrapyard, uh, so that they can be recycled. Um, and I believe uh, more or less that's it for this presentation. I am very happy that um, uh, I was able to show you all of this. I'm going to open my laptop right now and double check if you have submitted any interesting questions that uh, we should answer right now. And as my laptop is firing up, I hope that you are sending more and more questions in. And remember that if you want to find more live presentations, maybe more videos uh, that we have produced before, you can find them on our YouTube channel and also on our websites. And um, on our websites, we have prepared, prepared a special pages where you should be able to find all previous live sessions and check the schedule for all future live sessions as well. I do have a couple of questions here and I'm going to start reading the questions and try to give you the answers right away. Uh, the first question here, if I can buy your saw blades in Malaysia, it's a great question. So um, basically, I believe that you should be able to find and buy our blades anywhere in the world and I know specifically for Malaysia, we do have a great representative uh, there. Um, you can find all our representative contact information on all our websites. For instance, if you go to woodmiser.eu or woodmiser.com or woodmiserafrica.com or in this case woodmiserasia.com, in the contact page you should be able to select the country that you're looking for a contact for and in this case, that would be Malaysia, and you will be able to, uh, to find uh, the contact information for, um, for a great representative of ours in Malaysia, Marco, and he'll be happy to help you with buying and sharpening blades and other woodmiser equipment as well. Another question is, are uh, your blades produced exclusively in Poland? Actually, we produce blades in Poland as well as in the United States. Um, and our offers might differ slightly. However, in general, uh, we produce similar bla blade profiles and we use similar blade types. 
However, depending on the country you're in, you should be able to get the most popular blade types uh, that are sold in the country. This means that uh, our local representatives have worked with us for 30 years, some of them have worked for us longer, and they have tested different kinds of blades and blade types, blade profiles for local wood species. And the last question that I can see here in the list is, uh, I would like to ask if Woodmiser had plans to add spiral cutter heads as molder, um, and this is a customer asking, so, um, yes, so basically, um, the, what the customer is asking is if we are going to be adding a spiral cutter for, for our molder planers. That's uh, something in line with our woodworking machines. As we are producing uh, planers and molders, thicknesses here in Poland as well, there are some cutter heads located in the machine itself. So there could be a spiral uh, cutter head that the customer is mentioning for the horizontal, so meaning for planing or jointing, uh, as well as for thicknessing. From uh, what we have tested and looked before and spoken with uh, a, um, a great engineer of ours, uh, Bo Mortensen, he is the uh, person who has developed this line of woodworking machines and um, as you know, a few years ago, we acquired the Mortensen uh, factory in Sweden and all the products with that as well. Bo himself personally said that he doesn't see a, a big difference um, between the horizontal cutters for the planers and for jointers. So uh, using his words and his answer, I would say that currently we're not looking to produce the, to change our horizontal cutters. However, for the side cutter blocks, yes, we are looking and testing some different solutions. So we know that industry is going forward and actually Woodmiser has proven during its um, um, history that uh, Woodmiser is trying to go in foot with their customers. So we started with one sawmill, to, for general public, and then we extended our offer to make sure our hobby sawmillers can get a small sawmill. We extended our offer to industrial sawmills, industrial lines, to make sure that our biggest customers uh, can uh, choose from range of products too. And of course, the woodworking equipment is one of our latest acquirements for our wood processors around the world. I can see here that I'm getting a notification from the team. Uh, there are no more questions. I am glad uh, that we had the chance to talk to you about the blade production, how to choose the blade and how to extend your blade life. And I would like to invite you to stay in contact with us. And I would like to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel here. And if you're watching this on Facebook, then perhaps follow us on Facebook as well. We do have over 21,000 YouTube subscribers. These people are very happy to see our new videos coming out. We are releasing different kinds of customer stories, uh, new product releases, uh, Woodmiser news from around the world. So I am sure that you will like those on our YouTube channel. If you are a Facebook or um, Instagram user, you can follow us there as well. Depending on where you're located, try to find our local channel. Uh, we do have over half a million uh, Facebook followers. And depending on the country, we've got a lot of followers on Instagram as well. So if you would like to find us on the US, you should be able to find us as Woodmiser. And if you're looking for our handle here in Europe, that's Woodmiser Europe. And depending on the country, for instance, a quick shout out to our German team. You should be able to see a German Instagram channel as well. Um, before I let you go, uh, another great way to communicate and stay in touch with Woodmiser is Woodmiser newsletter. We have got over 60,000 subscribers around the world and we do try to send personalized information in Europe. So we translate our newsletter depending on where you're subscribed. 
So if you are subscribed in Bulgaria, Latvia, Estonia, Slovakia, Slovenia, anywhere in Europe, we would be sending you a personalized native um, newsletter to make sure that we can inform you about local news, local promotions and local sales. It's been a great pleasure to uh, show you all of the Woodmiser stuff here today and I really hope that you enjoyed the video and I really hope that you enjoyed this live stream and uh, subscribe to our channel and I'll be happy to see you and I'll be happy to answer all your questions next time too. Bye.